welcome to our session on Enter the Metaverse. Um, we are being joined today by three or four amazing UK companies to talk about how the Metaverse is adapting around us and how it's evolving. We have Tracy, Niall and Daniel. Um, first up, Tracy, tell me about your company and what you guys do. Hi everyone, it's great to be here. I'm Tracy from Polystream. We are a cloud technology company and we're working on command streaming, which um, to keep it simple, is a very, very shiny new way to stream games and virtual worlds from the cloud. And we believe is a, a big infrastructure key to unlocking the metaverse. And today I'm here to mainly talk about our new product, Phantom, as part of that metaverse, because Phantom allows you to have a link, invite your friends and family to jump instantly into virtual worlds without any downloads. Um, so it's quite an exciting time and I think, uh, the metaverse isn't science fiction anymore. I'm really excited to be talking about it today. Awesome. Great to have you here. Um, Daniel, tell me about Happy Finish. Absolutely. Um, I'm Daniel Cheatham. Um, I head up what we refer to as the interactive division of the business. Um, we've been in the business of creating immersive um, technology-based content and experiences for uh, predominantly brands over the last eight to 10 years, um, working with the likes of Nike, Netflix, Microsoft, and so on. Um, really interested in um, how we can leverage our skill sets, uh, create experiences that sort of sit within this new realm of the metaverse that create meaningful interactions for audiences. Awesome. And Niall, tell me about the mighty Dandelion and Burdock. Thanks all. Um, I'm Niall Thompson. I'm the Managing Director of Dandelion and Burdock. And we create digital experiences, interactive installations and live events for a global set of clients. We've got offices here in London and also in Los Angeles. And we primarily use real-time technology to create spectacular animated content. And what we're currently doing is helping companies transition to delivering virtual events and understanding what that means for their audiences. Awesome. Um, and I'm Sol Rogers, I'm the founder of Rewind, we're an immersive um, content specialist based out of London and Los Angeles and we're really focused on trying to bring the physical and digital world a little bit closer together. You might have seen our work as kind of hybrid events for Madison Beer, launching Jaguar's electric car all in virtual reality and the BBC Home Project lets anyone go to space. Um, but all of us really have been working for the last, you know, eight to ten years creating content which i think is really the bedrock of what a lot, a lot of people begin beginning to call the metaverse and um, the metaverse has got a lot of attention recently and it seems to be a buzzword kicking around but i think one of the first things to talk about is that for me personally and i, I this group agrees is that the metaverse we are just at the very beginning of trying to define what it is <clears throat> it's like a, a, a 16th century surgeon trying to describe what the human body is they know some of the bits and the parts, but really we don't know any of the detail to get from there to now, or the original founders of the internet in the kind of 60s and 70s wouldn't have a clue that Snapchat would be this big where we are right now, but it is a journey to get to that point. Um, but I, I guess kind of open question to the group, but what does the metaverse mean? And, you know, why is it so important at this time? Maybe uh, Tracy, do you want to jump off? Yeah, I think it's a great question because I think you're right. We're seeing that pivot from trend and from the from what we know is the story of the metaverse, the metaverse being a destination to actually, you know, all of us here are building it and we're, we're living in it. And for me, the metaverse is becoming that extension of um, and that blend of where our real and virtual selves um, live and connect and socialize and, and have emotional experiences. And I feel um, this year in particular has accelerated that emotional adoption, the emotional shift that we've had from the technology side so that our brains are taking us into a, oh, hang on, how do I, how do I emotionally feel around these cultural experiences now. And the label that I think sort of feels most comfortable around that is, is the metaverse. Yeah, and I, I believe that, you know, we were talking the other day that it's the groundwork has been done. And I guess the games industry believe they have already built the metaverse in some ways from these multiplayer massive environments where people can come together and the rest of the world is finally waking up to those kind of technologies. But um, 
maybe Daniel, that I know that you've been building kind of <clears throat> proof points for brands along the way, but what are what are we seeing now, which is tangible, that is kind of the first glimpses in, maybe? Yeah, um, uh, I mean, it's. I have a particular view on um, on what the metaverse is, and um, uh, for me, you know, I, I'm not sure it is completely new um, in many respects. I, I, I like to think of the fact that you know it's sort of an evolution on f f from the internet, from digital connectivity. Uh, uh, where does the where does the line from it being a digital virtual layer on the world or representation of real life? which I think is, is in some ways a, a definition of the metaverse. But where does Zoom sit on that? Where, where does Facebook sit on, on that spectrum? Where does it sit when I'm bouncing between mobile and desktop, not necessarily just VR? Um, so I, I, from a distinction perspective, I think that the, 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 the foundations are already there. Um, uh, how brands, I mean, brands are super keen to try and leverage this space because when I'm engaged digitally, when I feel like I have agency in a space, I'm really listening, I'm really paying attention. And obviously my eyeballs, my ears are valuable to brands. So um, this was one of the areas that we get asked a lot is how do we leverage the metaverse to get our message across to people? And it's really, it's really interesting. Absolutely. I think people are, uh, everyone's, especially in this time of, you know, global pandemic, we've all had an acceleration towards, you know, using technology to connect people from, you know, disparate locations around the world. And I think that is a forcing function, but uh, I'm sure we all have had it. Everyone seemed to knock on our doors like this time March last year saying, can I have a virtual insert brand product event sport? And we had to remind them that the, you know, the technology isn't quite there yet. We're very close and some, we have these, some of it, but you know, if you wanted to do a VR version or whatever, there's just not enough headsets in the world yet. Um, no, I mean, the metaverse obviously has so many different things, but what's your point of view and what type of work are you doing at the moment that kind of leads towards it? I think, you know, Tracy and Daniel really hinted on, you know, a few kind of key elements of what, you know, I would define as the metaverse. And I think it is that, you know, that hyper-connected alternate digital reality. And I think it's kind of born out of the adoption of new technologies and that willingness to try to to meet in these alternative spaces, you know, these virtual spaces. And we're seeing it on the very kind of base level, which is, you know, people doing online learning or being forced to do online learning, you know, attending virtual concerts and even just, you know, video chats or conferences like this. And I think where it gets really interesting for us is, as content producers who primarily work in live events is starting to understand how that will then transition into what we would call kind of a hybrid virtual event. And we're certainly foreseeing that this trend of you know these physical spaces with virtual spaces will will continue going forward and what's particularly interesting is how kind of luxury brands and live entertainment you know companies will start to kind of embrace this hyper digital age and i think you know gaming is such a huge part of it and i think what we're seeing is that games are feeling more like events and virtual events are feeling more like games when we're starting to weave in things like interactivity I think Tracy, you mentioned something really interesting about you know these cultural moments and finding ways to kind of have those moments in a virtual space, I think is gonna be really important because it allows people to discuss that world and that experience outside of it, you know, with their friends and family so that it becomes more real. And I think that's what makes it all feel more tangible. Yeah. I think it's I think it's absolutely that. And that has led us to thinking about not just um how we are creating uh, experiences for players and how we are bringing people into virtual game worlds. Um, for us, we're interested in the spectator piece. We're interested in bringing spectators into those environments. Uh, I think I'd read a stat that 38% of gamers went into non-gaming events last year. So we've got Fortnite concerts and, um, you know, we've got uh, tournaments in, in Rocket League. And, and when you put a spectator in that environment real time that doesn't impact core gameplay, but they get to just hang out and connect and socialize, and then you give them presence and agency. And I think, you know, Daniel already said about agency. 
And I feel that's a really big key to this this sort of next uh, trend of, of where the metaverse was taking us next. We're entering the metaverse. Um, when we give spectators president agency, we open up these experiences to all of these people who have become early adopters and maybe some people have been a bit anxious. Um, you know, oh, Zoom, I'm having to now have uh, calls with my mum on, on video cameras. And I think we've got over that that hurdle this year. And now I'm really excited as to what do we do for these new audiences that are in this space? How do we engage? How do we connect? And how do we go beyond gaming? How do we make these truly connected, emotional, immersive experiences that everybody can share? Yeah, I mean, um, um, for us, we've been create, doing a lot of virtual reality creation over the last few years, which I think is an ultimate end to being able to feel presence within a digital world of digital mm -hmm. environment. And all of our work there is trying to make something which connects with audiences and makes them feel participant in a story. You know, it's all storytelling in different fla flavors. But most recently, uh, meaning to what Niall was talking about, it's about creating hybrid events and hybrid spaces, things that exist in the real world and the digital. And this is for us, you know, most recently working on the Madison Beer concert for Sony is a perfectly digital twin of Sony Music Hall. It's a perfect digital twin of her to perform in that virtual <coughs> space. And so allowing mm. virtual visitors to attend what could be a physical concert that happens side by side. Mm. And it solves, you know, obviously it's a forcing function of the pandemic. People can't get together in the real world. Yeah. How can we get them together virtually? But as we come out of it, I think those, that you know, bedrock will stay because there will be those that, yeah. you know, A, that venue can only hold a thousand people. We can now add 10,000 or 10 million in there because digital visitors mm. as many as you like. But secondly, you know, there's a whole other, other thing that we've got to be worried about, which is climate change. And the biggest impact actually to um, climate check to climate impact from a gig is 90% is the people that visit it. All those people that drive to the event. It's not actually yeah. the, pe the people doing a gig and Coldplay have said that they won't do any more touring unless it's net zero. Um, yep. But part of that digital world that we're creating at that point and for the metaverse is about feeling present participatory and having a moment. And now you were talking to me the other day about how you really concentrate on trying to create intimacy as part of those experiences. Well, I think it's about um, finding ways to make the metaverse feel human. And I think, you know, one of the fundamental things that will make it feel like that is something you mentioned, Sol, which is like storytelling. Um, you know, making it feel like what we all naturally want to do anyway. And I think it's about weaving things like interactivity, you know, making the space feel um, not necessarily real. You know, it, it, you have a, a weird opportunity because it is a virtual space, it can be anything, but I still feel like it needs to feel um, like somewhere you would want to spend time. You know, that that's just comes down to the fundamental core of being human. You want to spend time in a space and it's, it's our job as creators to, to design that. Um, so that's, that's kind of our thinking around it. I would love to say to Nal's point, for me, it is exactly that. That's the thing that really, really excites me when it's an extension of the real. And um, now when you talk about intimacy, um, one of the things that it makes me think about is um, how we move as ourselves seamlessly across these experiences so Sol the Madison beer concert was just I mean chef's kiss it was amazing and it was great but I had to talk to my friends about it outside of that experience many of us were in it together um, and and then when you think about how you leverage brands on top of it within that space I want I want to be me I don't want to really adopt an avatar I don't want to then have to change that avatar in the next experience that I go into that economy of avatars I think is complicated for brands the moment that I can be myself in these spaces I think is where I'm going to begin to feel more of those intimate moments where I go to a concert and maybe in real life they're a tiny little figure on a on a stage or I, I have to watch the main band on a screen anyway but I come in the car and I'm hanging out with my friends and that moment when it becomes that a little bit more real I think is going to be connected to how much of myself is in that experience versus Oh, look, I look like a, a giant snowman with a dog's face and I've, I've had to <laughs> buy, a, buy a, you know, a gun in the marketplace before I can join into this conversation. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think that's one of the the challenges, but the exciting things to explore right now. And there's so many different ways of, uh, as as Daniel was talking earlier, there's so many ways into this connected tissue, which is the metaverse. There are so many different layers, and you often talk about the idea of mo multimodal. Like, can you talk a bit about how you're trying yeah. to make sure that there's lots of ways in to access content and people to kind of connect? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, the, the term interoperability um, is is a really key term in 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 many ways um, around uh, what we're sort of alluding to is the metaverse. One, I, and I pick up on a point that um, Tracy made, which was with regards, I mean, we, we, we tend to get, we go all the way to virtual, complete virtual environments, but actually um, I, the metaverse for me also means a layer on the real world that I, when I am in real life, I can interact with that brings me a, some, some sort of utility. And um, that utility can be entertainment. I mean, it's why Netflix does so well. We all need to be entertained at times, but it could be also, from a professional perspective or an educational perspective um, or wayfinding even, I think that's part of the metaverse. Um, but I'm, I'm interacting with that, probably not in a, in a HMD, I'm interacting with that via my mobile in the most part. And you know, the proliferation of mobile devices, we've all got them. And we've, all, we've all got access to a layer of the metaverse. So um, I think the multimodality um, and interoperability is a really key point that's gonna drive um, adoption. Um, and there's a destigmatization of people entering the metaverse in different ways now, even with lawyers becoming cats accidentally for um, appearances in court. I mean, for me, that, I mean, for me, that's a really amazing example of the metaverse. And he said something really cool, actually. He said it's a Texan phrase. Um, uh, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Um, and so I think we're, we're, we're finding that people are entering the metaverse in, in small little ways via Zoom checking out AR on their mobile device, potentially, and we are probably of the subset of people who do more of this, stick a headset on and let's have a virtual event. Um, and we're, we're working on something I can't talk too much about with big tech company at the moment, which is really focused on um, how do we bring people into a virtual event, a virtual conference, a gig um, from different access points, from desktop, from mobile, from in, in MR, in VR, and um, interoperability, just to, to wrap up on that, on, on that term, I think is really important when we think about who is going to be owning the metaverse. Nobody should own it, but all of the big tech players will try to have their, have their version. Um, it's a bit like Android and iOS um, back in the day, you know, it's really painful. I want, I want to build an app. I have to build it twice, maybe. I have to build it three times when Microsoft was uh, in the game with their operating system. So how do we how do we get over that challenge for the metaverse? It, 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 I, I want to have I want to be me, and I want it to work like the real world. Um, so that's uh, some challenges, but some exciting ones. Absolutely, it's um it, we are. Uh, I feel very lucky to be at this point <clears throat> in technology to be able to start playing in this space and try and help define it. Um, more and more, I think the main thing just uh, as we come to the close of our session is that. The metaverse offers us quite a lot of hope and excitement to be able to create meaningful connections between people. And I think as we move forward into it, uh, uh, all of us here definitely will be holding on to create amazing content for uh, human beings to experience and be participant. And we're gonna try our best to keep out some of the things that you know, in our real world are, you know, uh, make our lives more difficult. We want people to be open. We want to include diversity. We want the world to be there. And I think with this digital environment, I think we can get there. So um, thank you, Niall, Daniel, Tracy, for this conversation. We know we could talk for hours on this subject. We haven't even <laughs> talked about pervasive AR or open standard or digital nations, um, but maybe we'll get to those on the next one. But thank you all for joining me this morning. We'll catch you guys again soon.